In this session, uh, I'm going to talk about obturator canal block and the adductor canal block. So, uh, you know, uh, there are many approaches for obturator canal block, but uh, they can be classified into distal or proximal approaches. So, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, distal approach first. So, uh, with obturator canal block, I place a patient in the supine position and his, his hip uh, slightly uh, externally rotated like this. And first, uh, first, first place transducer on the inguinal crease, like this. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, right. And uh, first, identify the femoral artery and vein. Then move transducer along the inguinal crease medially like this. Then you can find, you can, you can see three adductor muscle layers. The most uh, superficial one is here, uh, the adductor uh, longus muscle, and the second one is uh, the adductor brevis, and uh, the deepest muscle is the adductor magnus muscle. So uh, this is the uh, image of the distal approach, and with distal approach, we have to inject at least uh, into, uh, into at least two planes, this plane and this plane. Uh, within this plane, the anterior branch of obturator knob is running within this plane, and the posterior branch of obturator knob is uh, lying here. So we have to inject local anesthetics into this plane and this plane. Uh, I usually use uh, 5 to 10 milliliter of local anesthetics into uh, each plane, right? Uh, we can use both uh, medial to lateral direction. I usually uh, use this, this direction, uh, but you can also use later, lateral to medial direction. But the artery is very close to this plane laterally, so if you use uh, lateral to medial direction, uh, we have to care about the uh, artery, okay? So, again, with this approach, we have to uh, inject local anesthetics at least twice. And then I'm going to talk about proximal approach. <coughs> uh, with proximal approach, I tilt the transducer cranially like this. Then, this muscle is, you know, adductor magnus. After tilting the transducer, this muscle will disappear, and another muscle is coming. This muscle is uh, the obturator external muscle. And you can see the plane here. This plane, I mean the plane between pectineus muscle and uh, the obturator external muscle. This plane is a target of proximal approach. If you uh, inject local anesthetics uh, into here, uh, it works as a blockade, blockade of both anterior and posterior branches of obturator knob by using a single injection. So, uh, with proximal approach, we can reduce the volume of local anesthetics, right? But, uh, you know, I usually uh, use in-plane in approach from lateral to medial, but uh, transducer is tilted uh, so much, so it's a bit difficult to imagine where the right place to insert the needle to visualize both needle and target simultaneously. Uh, of course, you can use out-of-plane technique but uh, yeah, it's also a bit difficult, so I usually recommend, uh, I usually teach this style approach first for beginners. After that, uh, I teach proximal approach. So do you have any question about the obturator and block? Okay, so I'm going to talk about adductor canal, canal block. After that, uh, you can try. So... When I perform a ductal canal block, I also place transducer at the inguinal crease first and identify the artery. Then I move transducer along the 
along the femoral artery and move transducer distally like this. Then this muscle, this muscle is uh, the sartoris muscle. Sartoris muscle is coming after moving transducer distally like this. This muscle is coming in from lateral to medial, like like this. And at the mid side level, the artery is located at the midpoint of the sartoris muscle. And here you can see the nerve just lateral to the the artery. Here, here this this one is the nerve. And this nerve contains both one the saphenous nerve and the other is uh, the nerve to vastus medialis and the nerve to vastus medialis also innervates the anterior and the lateral capsule of the knee that's why the uh, uh, adapter canal block works as a, as an algesia after knee surgery it's not it's not just a saphenous nerve block it also can block the the nerve uh, reaching the anterior and the lateral capsule of the knee. And, uh, yeah. And uh, compared to femoral nerve block, the adductor canal block can spare the muscle strength, muscle strength of cradle femoralis, femoralis. So the adductor canal block can reduce the risk of fall after knee surgery. All right? Do you have a question? Okay, so would you like to try to play the transducer? Yeah, this is R3. Move transducer immediately. Yeah, right. I, I, you should uh, place perpendicular, yeah. Bit medially, you can see the three muscle. You should put with more pressure. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. Here, the plane of the anterior branch, and this is the plane of the uh, posterior. Yeah. Uh, you mean proximal? Uh, so you should tilt the transducer cranially. Like this, so you can see another plane here, the plane between pectineus and obturator external. Yeah, anyway, it's okay. So basically, I'm just going to find the three muscles, mm -hmm. and then go immediately until I find the three muscles, and then I tilt it. Yeah, right, right. Okay. Right. It's just identifying the muscle, and then identifying the plane in between the muscle. Yeah. So when you just Inject with that uh, he is leaning at the plane there, the plane. So when we inject within within the plane, yeah. go straight to the plane. Yeah, go straight to the plane. And just like Uh, actually, five milliliter five milliliter works, but I usually inject eight. Eight. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, until until you can see, uh, you until you see the the artery at the midpoint of the sartoris muscle. Like this. Yeah, right. Good. Yeah, just around the nerve, yeah, but you have to you have to penetrate the fracture of the sartoris muscle. That's all. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, we are not sure where uh, where uh, some branch come from the main nerve. So yeah, we can trace the spread of local anesthetics, but we can predict the uh, effect. So yeah. Yeah, proximal approach. Yeah, here's a brain. Oh, this is a bone. Oh, oh, this is a, a superior pubic ramus. Oh, okay. 
So you know, because it is a very uh, thin as a hyperechoic with acoustic shadow. So this is a ball. Yeah, yeah, and the uh, salt reef is coming in. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is the right place at the mid side, mid tie level. So I'm in, not here. Yeah, here, here not here. So we have to inject from. Uh, insert from lateral because uh, when if you <laughs> insert from medial, we have to cross over the artery. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's very dangerous. If I just wanted to see something else, uh, uh, you sh uh, in, in such case, you should inject more distally. Yeah. But it's not uh, you can't identify Yeah, and uh, you can't uh, you can't produce. The sens uh, sensory block of the uh, uh, yeah yeah cuts of the knee. Uh, for sorry. For knee surgery, any knee surgery, what? Uh, yeah, it works as an analgesia for any knee surgery, but not works as an anesthesia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, after that, I, I will explain. Yeah. yeah more also. So you can see the two two plane with three muscles, and uh, from this position, uh, at this position, you sh have to tilt cranial like this. Oh, great. This is a target, target plane. Uh, I, I usually use eight, just eight. Plane. Well, uh, the plane of anterior branch and the plane of posterior. Yeah. Going down with the artery. Yeah, so the wrist is coming in. Yeah, she has the right place because the artery and now it is located at the midpoint, the third wrist muscle. Ah, so the same question. So, so yeah, the problem is so you can. Insert catheter from lateral to medial into the adductor canal, but the problem is, uh, in my institute, uh, orthopedic surgeon uh, rejected to uh, inserting catheter before surgery because the tourniquet is placed here. So the solution is one: uh, putting a catheter after surgery, and the second solution is uh, you use tunneling tunneling from here. But in my practice, I insert caster from here by using a 15 centimeter needle. Very, you know, very long needle. So first, I identify a data canal like this, then rotate clockwise like this. Then, here, here is a... Target and I insert needle from here using a long needle <laughs> and trace the uh, needle advancement and finally the needle tip reaches the adductor canal. Then I threaded the caster, threaded the caster through the needle. So the the insertion point of caster is here, but the tip of the caster is located here. So it works, but very uh, complicated. <laughs> so I don't recommend this technique for others. <laughs> yeah. 
So there are three three solutions, I, I think. Ah, sorry. Yeah, femoral artery. And yeah, my medial. You're here. Yeah. Yeah, three layers and two planes. The plane for anterior uh, branch and the plane for posterior branch. Of uh, obturator nerve. Yeah, right. And this obturator nerve together with femoral nerve and lateral cutaneous nerve combination can it provide uh, So or? it depends the case, but if uh, if uh, if uh, I want to provide an anesthesia uh -huh. only by peripheral nerve block. Uh -huh. Uh, I combine femoral obturator and uh, lateral cutaneous nerve block and uh, sciatic. For hip. Ah, for hip. Uh, for hip, actually, I actually I usually don't perform obturator nerve block for hip surgery. But if you uh, perform uh, obturator nerve at proximal level yeah. here, mm -hmm. uh, this procedure can block uh, hip, hip branch of obturator nerve now. So there are anterior branch and posterior branch and hip branches of obturator nerve. So with the proximal approach, we can block every uh, branch of obturator nerve by a single injection. Yeah. Yeah, right, right, right place. Thank you very much. You're welcome.